Hey, welcome back to Home Studio Pro. This time around, we're here to discuss best practices when it comes to backgrounds of your videos. Now, look, here's my background. This is what my home studio looks like. I think we need to establish that what you say is important, how you sound like as a presenter, but also audio wise, how the video sounds, all of that is tremendously important. But let's be honest, all of the background behind you is something your viewers are going to be noticing and they're going to be attaching and interpreting as part of whatever you present in your videos. So backgrounds are critical. Don't think that they're not. But the question is, what goes into making a best background? Here are some best practices, I would say, for a home studio background. Number one is that you want it to be attractive, but not distracting, not too busy, not something that's going to catch eyeballs. You want to be the center of focus as the presenter or whoever your subjects are and what they're saying. You want that to be the primary focal point of the production, right? You don't want the background to be too distracting. But how do you make it attractive but also not distracting? There's a bunch of things that go into this, and we'll look at some real-life examples in just a second. But just know, it can't be ugly, but it can't be too much. Fine line between that proportionately well lit as related to the subject. And I guess what I'm saying is too dark. Like if this were an all black background behind me, it might be too much of a contrast. Conversely, if it were too bright behind me, if I was entirely backlit, I would look like I'm in witness protection. So you want it proportionately lit to the subject. If it's all dark and it's all kind of a darker theme, okay, no problem. It's proportionate. If we're all a little bit brighter than normal, that's fine too, to a certain extent, but it's all in proportion. And last but not least, generally you want things behind you to be a little bit out of focus. That kind of makes the subject pop. You don't want your subject to blend into the background. And a big part of that is focal length. How much, um, how much length do I have on the lens? How far away can the camera get? But the farther away, the better actually in terms of focal length and depth you're creating. You'll notice here in the home studio, <clears throat> my back is not up against the wall behind me. First off, it's the corner shape of a wall, so it gives me a little bit more additional depth. But even if this were just a flat wall behind me, it's not six inches behind my back. You have to create some depth between your subject and the ultimate background. Okay, so with that established, let's also understand one more thing. I totally respect that not everybody has a big space. Some people are operating in a small space. I'm also here to tell you that nothing in front of you, like what I'm seeing this way, doesn't really matter. So do whatever you have to do over here to make sure that behind you, what the people are seeing is ultimately taken care of. Before we get into some of these examples, here are some things to avoid. Large, cavernous echoey spaces. If there's too much background behind me and if the shot is, and we're not even talking about shot framing, obviously that's an important part of it too. How you frame the shot, what you capture in the background. Is it a ton of background? Is it a narrow background? But you want to avoid large cavernous echoey spaces for acoustical reasons, number one. I already talked about backlighting. If the sun is setting right behind you or there's a bright window right behind you with no coverings on it, yeah, that's not generally going to turn out well. I would please also urge you, starting 2023 and beyond, I don't really need to see your unmade bed or your kitchen sink, your, your dirty dishes behind you, etc. I understand that people are broadcasting from home. We get that. That's what we're here to do, help you through part of that process. But do your best to not have some of these personal things and sensitive information in the background. A lot of people broadcast from their home office. Well, they also do their bills there, their taxes there, credit card info, phone numbers, uh, post-it notes in the background that have, you know, sensitive information, an IP address, an email login. Like, literally think about what are people seeing in my background. When I set this place up, I did it over time. I would move a light. I would alter this. I'd move the camera. I'd go back and forth. This is a tedious process to get your background right. But sometimes just look at it. I'm looking at the monitor right now. Is there too much of a hair light on this side? Maybe I'll change that later. Is the, is the camera level? Is the background level? Are there things that are straight or crooked in the background? Is this 
this, this, this is a, it's a real tree. It's a fake tree, right? But is, does the tree need to be repositioned? Just sit here and look at it for a second. Don't rush. Look at your background right now. What could I do to change this if I needed to, right? Make changes. This is a long, long game project. Just understand that. But your background is very important. Okay, let's get into some examples here. By the way, I've taken all these screenshots from a panel uh, discussion and live stream that takes place seven days a week. This is from Office Hours Global. Check them out here on YouTube. They do a great production in terms of virtual production. They talk about that, live streaming technology every day. They have very educated and capable panelists here who also, yeah, they do pretty good in their home studio shots. Here's one of them. Obviously, it's the holidays right now, the Christmas lights. I think sometimes there's a there's a fire brewing even on on the right side of this screen here too over his left shoulder. Um, that's great. I mean, it's got some it's got some cool lighting. It's got a darker background, but enough to understand exactly what's going on there. The all blue theme. I don't know if he if he coordinated that with what he was wearing that day, but it's out of focus. The subject pops. I mean, that is again, that is attractive in a background to look at, but it's not distracting. I give that one a pretty high grade. Uh, here's Alex. He is the creator of Office Hours. Look at his background. That's awesome. It's busy, but it's not distracting. Nothing's back there moving, uh, and it's attractive. It's it's you know I'm I'm like kind of like what is that over there? But I'm not so overwhelmed in it that I'm not paying attention to what he's saying. There's some good depth. Obviously, he's got a hair light on there too, which helps separate him from the background. It doesn't look like he's literally sitting with those shelves, you know, two inches behind him. So there's some space, a little bit of light being captured as part of that background. It's good. It's really good. Here's one that uses a little bit more color. Uh, Now, as you can tell, I'm a person who I use color here too. Uh, but, you know, very, very purple on one side, very blue on the other, specifically placed, what is that, a curtain behind his head? I mean, obviously that does well. It cuts out the corner, maybe some of the busyness. It, it helps his head pop out. And maybe you could say that if that curtain were there and it were a brighter color, it would help his head pop out from the background even more. You know, you can't really see the definition. Good hair light, by the way. You can see the light kind of like what I have here on top of his, his head and hair. Uh, but, you know, maybe that you could have the head pop out even more than it does here. But again, I don't mean to, to criticize, just saying, you know, as you look at this, here are some things to consider. Uh, the shelving unit in the background of this one. Again, you know, does that bother some people that some shelves are open? He was probably doing work or doing something right before, you know, this happened. So the the more things you can minimize in terms of the background that are personal or sensitive or they're your bed or your kitchen, uh, probably the better. But this looks, you know, just like a typical bedroom. But there's some up lighting in the back, nice cool blue color, all the color temperatures, you know, for his skin tone and everything else. Everything is white balanced properly. So it just goes to show you this doesn't need to be the fanciest thing in the world. A couple up lights there in the background and you've got yourself, you know, something attractive to look at here. Uh, this background, and I'm not even sure what that is behind this gentleman, whether that's an acoustic panel, a sound panel, uh, but simple, right? Blue color, um, not a not a distracting pattern. It is something to look at, and it does help pop a little bit, but this is not totally overwhelming. Now, it's basic, right? A lot of people could do just a solid color in the background, but this gives you a little bit of depth and reality. Uh, here's uh, here's his home studio, and it's got obviously the broadcast console on the far left of the screen. The I think the same mic I'm using here, the U87, uh, over his right shoulder there. This background for me, I like it. I would like to actually see a little bit more of it, though. I'd like some more lighting. Remember I said that you want your subject proportionately lit. I mean, he is very well lit on camera, face popping out, no problem. But maybe some more complementary lighting on the stuff in the background. So it's not so mysterious. I find myself getting a little bit lost in wondering like, what's over there? What am I, uh, if, it, if, if there were some more light on the subject, it might make the screen one more solid piece instead of saying, okay, here's the foreground, here's the background. Again, more, more lighting in the background, I would say to brighten up this, this image of this still frame, you know, but again, it's not bad to begin with. Just offering some advice here. Just trying to give you an idea of of how you could give yourself a really good background. So here is one that has 
more lighting on the background. See, this is more of that proportionate mix. The subject is lit well. The background is lit well. You even see some, some angled slash lighting up there uh, on those curtains. I like, is that a, called a banker's light? The little, where is it? Green, uh, green guy right here. That's cool. The old Mac, the old Macintosh computer. I mean, how cool is that, right? It's kind of a centerpiece. It's something to look at, but it's not on. It's not making noise or visuals. It's not distracting by any means, but it just lives there in the background. I think that is very cool. Also something to consider here, the angle of your shot, right? Is the background, like you can see the ground here because the camera on this person is so high shooting down. Now, maybe you want that. Maybe you don't want that, right? Maybe if this camera were positioned lower, right? Just imagine if we moved it, you would see none of that ground. Maybe you would see more of the background. Um, Bookcases, bookshelves, very popular. You can light those up differently, uh, but there is good depth here. His head pops out. Again, I just wanted to use this example to show you that a, a higher a higher vantage point on your camera is going to have, you know, the image looking down on you and you will see the ground. Like imagine here, there's, there's no floor you could see here, but if the camera were up there, you might see some floor behind me. Uh, okay, we talked about blurry backgrounds, bokeh as it's known in the uh, DSLR world, the mirrorless camera world. This is a lot of bokeh. Uh, this is, I would guess, an aperture setting of like 1.2. I mean, look how blurry the background is. This person's nose is in focus. Their ears are out of focus. And there's what, like an inch or two difference? Obviously, it's a good camera. It's, uh, it's got a good autofocus. It's razor sharp on his eyes and his glasses and nose and face. So the camera is in focus where it's supposed to be. But I caution you a little bit to going overboard on blurring the background. That's almost too blurry. I would do this if you had no other choice. You really didn't want people to see what was behind you. This is fine. It's a good method. There's nothing wrong with this. And, you know, for a lot of people, this is, this is what they're aiming for. But that background right there leaves it feeling a little bit overwhelming and unnatural, maybe for a long period of time. If you were going to watch me here in this home studio for a long period of time and my background were that blurry it might be a little, mu a little much. So something to consider. And here's the opposite of that. Here's somebody um, sitting in front of an LED screen. So they actually want you to see what the, uh, or LC, no, LCD, what am I saying? It's a, it's a TV monitor behind this person right here. Um, so they want you to see the background. They want you to see what it is. Now, this one has the capability of motion, of animating, of, of changing, right? So that's another thing to consider. Would you actually put a flat screen behind you as your background. And if you could frame everything else out, right, the edges of the screen out, if you could, you can uh, adjust it so that you can change your background. You could be anywhere you want. You don't have to green screen. You're obviously going to have to turn the brightness way down on any television for it to be behind you. But look at the setting here. I mean, that's pretty slick if you can swing it. So that's definitely another option as a background for the home studio. Okay. Backgrounds are important. I use some examples. Uh, shout out to Office Hours Global, by the way. Check them out here on YouTube. They have hundreds of people that join their show as panelists. They all have tremendous backgrounds. I wanted to show you there some of what I consider the best. Hopefully, this video provided you value. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Also, hey, subscribe to this channel. I've got lots more great stuff coming your way. Don't forget what you say is important, how you sound is extremely important, but your background cannot be forgotten. It cannot be a low priority.